So the third most liked question was um, the, the person who asked the question referred to an article which is in The Guardian. So my question is in light of this article, what are the expert views on this and when will we see the wide and affordable use of quantum techniques uh, in supercomputers? And the article was actually about a Canadian company called D-Wave who produce what they claim is a, a viable quantum computer. Now, I'm not an expert on this, uh, but we do have an article in the uh, final week talking about the future. And we have two articles there, one talking about exascale, which is um, the way of increasing supercomputing power in the conventional way, um, going up to exaflops, which is a thousand times more than the petaflop, uh, through just adding uh, many more conventional cores. But there is another article in that section about quantum computing. So, and it was written by a colleague of mine, Mark Bull, who's, who knows more about it than I do. But I think I would just say that, to summarize really what Mark says in that article, the point about quantum computing is that it can solve certain problems extremely quickly, um, extremely rapidly, um, potentially almost infinitely faster than a conventional uh, uh, computer can with a conventional algorithm. However, the number of uh, problems which are addressable through quantum computing is currently very, very small. There are a few uh, algorithms algorithms which have been worked out for solving very specific problems and if you want to solve those specific problems then quantum computing can in principle do it for you but at the moment they are very limited and they definitely don't apply to the kinds of large-scale numerical simulations that we do in supercomputing now you could argue that's because we phrased the problem in the wrong way we may do weather forecasting the way we do because we have it uh, fixed in our mind we want to run it on a large uh, conventional parallel supercomputer. However, a lot of people are looking at this. There's a lot of research going on into quantum computing algorithms, but currently only a very small class of problems are addressable through quantum computing. The other thing which Mark touches on in his article is that the D-Wave machine, there is some debate about how much of a quantum computer it is, but whether or not it is, is doing quantum computing, it's not doing quantum computing in the way which is currently, which is normally meant uh, what is normally meant by quantum computing is replacing the classical 0, 1 bits that we have in a normal computer with these qubits, which are quantum bits, which can have um, can be in a superposition of states. They can be partly 0 and partly 1 at the same time. And it's through manipulating these in, 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 um, in the correct way, which you can create algorithms, methods of solving problems, which are simply uh, completely different from what you do at a conventional computer. But I would encourage you to read that article um, when we can discuss it more. We have an Ask an Expert session at the end of the final week. And so um, at the moment, quantum computing is a very niche topic, uh, but there is a lot of research going on to it. So I don't think I can see it having much of an impact in the near future, but maybe in a few decades, uh, who knows? But it will require both advances on the hardware side to build computers which can uh, have a sufficient number of qubits to uh, address um, large enough problems. But more importantly, it will um, require a lot of advances on the theoretical side, uh, uh, having new techniques to express um, ways to solve um, computational science problems using quantum computing. And at the moment, I haven't seen any evidence that, that, that there's been any significant, significant progress on that.